Hey everybody, Dave here, and we're actually recording today. Unlike last week where we got 20 minutes into an episode and realized, hey, I hit the wrong button. So you guys got a five minute episode that got put out two days late. Sorry. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Greg? I am cold, but uh, otherwise doing okay. How about yourself? Yeah, it's been a little chilly, but we've been getting warmer. But I mean, I've been sitting around minus 11, minus 15 during the day, so... Minus 8 at night right now? That's not bad for what I've been getting. No, not at all. Yeah, it's supposed to drop down to minus 13 tomorrow. Uh, so that will be fun when that happens. Mm, I've already have been having that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I mean, we hit that kind of... I think it did last uh, last Saturday it was the coldest temperatures that we had last night uh, last time that we talked uh, I went to uh, grab the mail afterwards and even though it was like fine in the garage like I went out to get my mail and like my hands were on fire it was like the wind was that cold yeah we're supposed to hold steady at about minus eight all day like through through tomorrow happy birthday to me holy crap oh, single happy single, single, single negative digits and snow yeah I got no plans to go anywhere <laughs> yeah uh, we, we've certainly had enough over here we got some more last night and it was just like Really? I haven't even really shoveled it yet. Yeah, I'm at a point now because uh, we were getting some of that too. Snow all over the place. All kinds of snow. Snow, snow, snow. I stopped shoveling because it just filled up overnight. Now there's a big patch of ice underneath that snow. So hopefully we get some nice above freezing temperatures for a few hours someday to get that ice out of there. So the salt's yeah. not even working. Yeah, no, it's been snowing here enough that, uh, like, it'll snow just enough to be a problem and that you know you need to take care of it, but there, it's also so little that, like, you all don't really have the urge to and you're just kind of, like, kick it with your feet and just be like, ah, oh, just go away. Yeah, everybody, in case you haven't figured it out, we live in some pretty, uh, snowy places well we live by the great lakes uh different lakes but uh they also get something called lake effect snow and uh which can affect all of us and uh sometimes we just get a ton of it and sometimes i get the snow greg has and sometimes he gets the snow i have and sometimes i get both i don't understand that one <laughs> But yes, we're going to be talking today not about any TV, although we we, we may uh, we may venture into uh, to a subject because it's it's only what a day old that one we were talking about it a two little days bit, old two days old we were talking about it a little bit uh, before uh, jumping on camera. But uh, our main focus today is going to be pipe smoking in adverse weather conditions such as extreme cold. Yes. Yes, which, uh, well, I would say extreme cold and extreme heat. Uh, even though it, that's uh, far from... Uh, that's a few months away. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, it'll it'll be here sooner than we can think. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, and, and certainly you, you had to deal with some of that this summer with, uh, this past summer with uh, some of the house troubles that you had. Mm-hmm. That summer, oh, I'm glad it's over. I just wish that we had, you know, a little bit more in the way of the conditions of, you know, what am I thinking? Climate change. It could have done a little bit more to keep it a little bit cooler. While I had to use the outside for being eaten by mosquitoes. Right. 
Not that this basement's any roaring hell in the in in those months either. That's that's for sure. Whew. Uh, well, you know, I th I just think you know, years ago, you know, this wasn't as much of an issue for pipe smokers because it was generally more acceptable for you know your your regular pipe smoker to smoke in the home because everybody who smoked back then. And so it wasn't a big deal. And uh, you could just sit in your living room and have your pipe while uh, reading your newspaper or listening to the radio or watching the evening news. Or finding out one but, of your favorite uh, favorite uh, favorite characters on a show has been canceled. Not the show, just the character. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, I was born around the time when smoking in the home was kind of becoming more taboo because uh, when i was little both my parents smoked my mom quit early on when i was little um but uh, i remember them you know smoking in the house and then eventually uh, before i was too old my you know dad was stuck you know smoking outside and uh and then restaurants kind of uh became no smoking over time but I, I definitely remember too then you know where do you want to sit smoking non-smoking uh, and that those kind of changes which you know to be honest I don't I, I'm kind of glad you know people don't smoke in restaurants because even though I enjoy a pipe like I really don't enjoy being around smoke when I'm eating I just kind of want to enjoy my uh, my meal in peace and then have the pipe after. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, why would you want to eat somebody else's uh, smoke on your food? Because that's what's happening. Non-smoking right. was just a, a thing you could get, which was practically useless. Because what's it really going to do? Your people, you're smoking. The particles are ending up on your food. And there you go. Now, it wasn't until I went to college in Missouri that I saw some fast food restaurants. They actually still had smoking allowed in some the restaurants. But the way that they did it was they sectioned it off with like uh, plexiglass or uh, some sort of enclosure so that all the smoking happened in there and it was kept off from everyone else. Which, you know, it wasn't, you know, the best solution by like... But overall, it was, you know, not a bad one. But, um, and speaking of which, uh, what are you smoking tonight? Tonight, I'm smoking out of my, one of my country gentlemen. This one I've had for a while, as you can tell by the coloring. And, uh, just some best brown flake. What about you? What do you got going well, I am just about done with this uh, Elizabethan uh, mixture from uh, Peterson, formerly of Dunhill. And uh, in my Stanwell Bulldog. And uh, once I'm done with this, I'm going to switch to my Joby uh, Billiard with uh, uh, Brown's Chocolate Flake. Uh, with Bob's Chocolate Flake. So anyway, it's like, um, so I've always smoked outside, you know, other than when my wife isn't here, just kind of popping in to grab something, I'll uh, have my pipe with me sometimes, because I know that it'll uh, be gone before she gets home. Um, but don't tell her that. <laughs> but uh, um, so I, no matter what, I'm kind of stuck with in the elements. Thankfully, I have this garage here to kind of hang out, but it's not insulated. So, and right now we have uh, some of the um, some of the awning removed. So, unfortunately, a little bit of cold air gets in here. I have a heater running, but uh, you know, still, it's not not exactly the warmest. It just kind of it cuts out the wind chill. Yeah, I don't know if the, the people who watch the YouTube portion of, the, of our show will will notice, but I have. 
I can see your breath when you're talking when I know you don't have any pipe smoke left in your mouth. <laughs> so right. I know it's pretty <laughs> chilly right now. Right. But good thing you do have with having the garage there, regardless of whether, whether you're getting a little bit of cold weather in or not, is you got a nice windbreak, which would make yes. a big difference. Yes. Uh, I, when I first started, I didn't smoke inside of the garage, and uh, the wind was definitely uh, a, a frustrating thing to deal with. But, uh, you know, thankfully, I set up a little space out here, and I'm quite content. But I was thinking, too, I was thinking about, uh, you know, because there are times when I just kind of am out here lamenting that I'm not, like, comfy in like some sort of uh you know smoking room or uh, basement or attic where i could just uh enjoy myself in a, a warmer environment uh you know I, I just remember you know seeing like historical pictures of whether it's uh you know arctic explorers uh out in antarctica or somewhere with a pipe uh like i think you know uh, one of the big Antarctic explorers was a, a big pipe smoker, but uh, you know they all all kind of did back then anyway. Um, and then also kind of like World War II pictures that there's some that I remember seeing of guys in the desert heat uh, with their pipes, you know, sitting in you know foxholes or uh, outside of their tanks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know certainly I imagine those temperatures are way worse than what I have to deal with. So it, uh, it definitely makes you a bit hardier. Oh, for but, sure. Uh, you know, and like for generally for like my rule, uh, in winter, I tend to stay inside more when it's kind of single digit weather. Because essentially like I'm not able to really use my computer when it gets super cold um, or or anything, but uh, yeah, I'll use that time sometimes to read. But uh, if if I end up going, in, but if I end up going through a couple of days stretch where it's like below zero, once once we get to the single digits, it's like oh man, it's like uh, it's warm again, and that's when I uh, head back out and uh, just bundle up in my heaviest coat and uh enjoy a pipe i'm not suffering too much though because obviously i'm having this ice drink <laughs> <laughs> yeah no kidding it's cold out let's what do we do we drink cold beverages yeah it's just <laughs> it's just how i am even when it's super cold out i enjoy uh, I enjoy an ice drink oh, not, a, not a smoothie though Yep, I'm always forever drinking coffee. Cold, hot, doesn't matter. I will drink it. And then in the summer, uh, it can get pretty miserable in here too. Um, early on, it's not so bad because this the garage still kind of has a is a little bit cooler from the winter, retaining the coldness inside. But, uh, you know, mid-July, August, you know, when we're dealing with like 100 degree temperature, usually uh, that's a night when I'll just be like, oh, I think I'm gonna stay inside because I'll be outside. And even though I'll have like two fans running in here and there's big box fans, like I'll just be like sweating bullets and stuff. It just doesn't make it fun. No, no, that is not fun at all. Well, how about you? Well, typically when we're doing stuff like this, I'm always right here in the basement. And for the most part, it's not too bad. I mean, wintertime, it's uh, a lot better than it would be outside. I mean, I just got a draft coming in from the window I keep open. But beyond that, um, it's not bad. In the summer, it's uh, a little different because, you know, basements, they get moist in the summer because that's how the humidity works. 
So there's always a dehumidifier running if I'm down here, which I'll tell you, it's a real pain in the ass to try to get out of the uh, out of the audio. But you know what? Most people, I'm sure, listening don't mind that because you know they realize people realize you know you got conditions you gotta you gotta mitigate. You can't have your basement getting too sticky. Especially when you got all your electronic equipment in it. But around here, it's like... We get all the weather. Dry heat, cold, hot heat, wet heat. Heat, heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wet heat's the worst. Yeah, I'd rather dry heat, which we don't get very often. Yeah, and for, like for here, we live, you know, right by water. So uh, not only do we have to deal with um, kind of just like the humidity, the sticky humidity, but we also get a bunch of mosquitoes over here. Oh, yeah, uh, those things are bad here, too. Yeah, I actually, uh, I used to... Like in the winter time, I would have more lights on in here, and then as we transition to warmer weather, I, I forget about the mosquitoes, and then it just takes about one night of seeing a whole bunch of them kind of like make it into the garage and be like, okay, uh, gotta you know make it dark again so that uh, I'm not dealing with uh, all the mosquitoes. Yes, indeed. Uh. But I still, you know, even though it's frustrating to kind of deal with the, the colder weather or the uh, or the heat, which, you know, if I had to pick between the two, um, I think I think it's easier to enjoy a pipe in the heat, uh, like like in more like hotter temperatures, because it when it gets cold. You know, it gets to the point where, you know, you can't really feel, you know, your fingers, uh, your toes and everything. And that's when, usually when it, when that starts to happen, that's when I uh, know it's time to kind of call it a day and head inside. Uh, and that happens a lot sooner with um, the heat. It's more of just, you know, because I think the, the most dangerous part about, you know, with the dangerous part about cold is, you know, the cold itself. Uh, but with the heat, like, I feel like the sun has a lot to do with, you know, what makes summer dangerous temperature wise, you know, at night, yeah, you're miserable, like when, when you're hot and everything, but, uh, it's not going to impact you quite as much as the sun. So as long as, you know, you have a nice place in the shade or, uh, you know, some protection from the sun, I think it's just a matter, it's more of just a matter of willpower, I, right. I feel. So even though I prefer winter as a, a season overall, like I'm more inclined to, to stay inside during the winter than I am the summer. So, did you have any more thoughts on uh, adverse weather? No, no, because uh, I, I really don't. Because I, I just smoke in the basement in, in those conditions rain, shine, hot, cold. COVID has really changed uh, how things work around here in regards to, to the pipe. Because, well, <laughs> the fun part about it is. I smoke exactly twice a week when we record and this pipe life, all of which has to take place in front of a computer. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't really have to deal with it all that much. I don't really have many, many thoughts on it. And uh, when I did have to deal with it before I was, you know, 
re- recording my, my pipe smoking for posterity on the internet forever. Um, I just, I just decided I just wouldn't in, in the extremes, in the extremes, like, you know, being in, you know, the warm, one of the warmest parts of Canada for the cold, it was, it was really easy to just go and, uh, just, you know, zero plus one plus two. It's not that bad. So it was easy to smoke out. You just throw, throw a nice coat on gloves, like, like what you've got on there basically. And mm-hmm. easy. Yes. But you know, when it gets, starts getting down to the minuses, like we're talking the double digit minuses, then it was mostly, well, I just don't want to do this. So I'm going to stay inside and I'll either smoke or I won't. Unfortunately, my wife has always been very uh, accepting of me smoking in, inside during the winter months, at least. So it worked out. Yeah, which is which is nice. Now, spring and fall are really the the better uh, months for uh, oh, definitely. pipe smoking. The only difficult part is when you have to enjoy a pipe like uh, while there's a tornado going on. Don't think I've ever had to deal with that one. Yeah, it tends to put your match out before you're able to light your pipe. I bet. My Bix wouldn't be any better. Yeah. And then you have to deal with, you know, your pipe getting sucked into the vortex, uh, uh, debris. Oh, yeah. Smashing through. And then, and then you know you're 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 up there if, you know you, if you if it's not just your pipe and you've gone up in the vortex too it's just like oh and those things man I'm gonna die but I can see my house from here. It's quite the experience. I imagine uh, enjoying a pipe during a hurricane is probably a similar experience as well. And I think that would be worse because you're not just got debris you got water coming at you too like. If the wind doesn't put your match out, the water will. Very true. But yeah, since I brought it up, maybe we must as well talk a little bit about the uh, the Mandalorian the thing that broke a couple of days ago, recording time. Which by the time you guys hear it, will probably be a week ago. If you were looking forward to seeing Cara Dune after. Uh, Season two, don't. She won't be there. Unless they replace her with a different actress. I don't think that's going to happen. Like You you uh, kind of can't do that. She's been... If some, if, the, if this whole thing with comparing uh, being a Republican to uh, the Holocaust, no matter how you took it, um, had not of... Or had of happened, you know, season one... Yeah, like there, there are plenty of uh, MMA fighters out there that could fill, fit the fit the description and uh, probably take over the character. But after a couple of seasons, you can't really make the switch like that. It's a little more difficult because people will have gotten used to her by this point. Right. So I think she's just going to get written off. Or just never brought up again. And then they've got like, since Mandalorian's not airing season three till next year, they got plenty of time to figure out how they're going to deal with that. I suppose they do. But I can't help to think think about it right now. I'm going, geez, it's like Ralph Dibney all over again. Yeah, no, it's a, for me, I mean, obviously, you know, we see, we see it kind of differently. uh, In this case, you see a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for me, it just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty big about, uh, you know, free speech and, uh, you know, for that, like, I just feel that uh, it, to me, I'm I'm disappointed that Disney did that, mainly because also I'm I'm disappointed because 
you know, we live in an era too where there's no, it's all about uh, immediate, uh, you know, retribution and uh, there's no room for, you know, uh, what's, what's the word? You know, there's, there's no attempt to do any sort of recourse, which, you know, they may have asked her to apologize and she might have said no. So we, you know, we don't know that stuff, True. but, uh, you know, based on what I've seen from other things, it, I don't think it would have you know, mattered much because we just live in an era where if you say something, you need to be gotten rid of no matter what. Yeah, you're gonna get canceled. It's called cancel culture, if I'm not, if I, if I, if I got the terms right. Yes. Yeah, and I hate cancel culture. And uh, yeah, no, I just, I think it's also kind of hypocritical of Disney as well, because just because they have certain people in their employ that have, in my opinion, done worse things or said worse things and still held on to them. Uh, so I think it's kind of ridiculous. You know, what I have, I understand what Kara said, I with, with what Gina said, and, uh, I do agree with her on, on a lot of stuff, but, you know, with it, um, I would have probably used a different example, but that's just me. But, uh, I mean, honestly, you know, it just kind of kills my interest in watching the Mandalorian uh, and, and, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. And, and my my take on it isn't isn't much different from yours, but I have always been of the of the opinion it doesn't matter in regards to what you watch. Because if you enjoy something and sure okay, the company made probably a stupid decision getting rid of her. I agree in the, in regards to that. That was probably dumb not holding on to her just because she's got an opinion that isn't popular. Myself? I'm going to watch The Mandalorian anyway because I don't give a crap about what the opinions of the actors are. Or the opinion of Disney. I don't care. Right. And to be fair, you know, like when I say that, like, you know, it, Pedro Pascal, he's put stuff out there comparing Republicans to Nazis and uh, Confederates uh, and putting them on the same level. And, you know, does that bother me as a Republican? Sure. Uh, but I mean, it's not a surprise to me because, you know, that that's Hollywood for you, you know, but... You know, even though, like, I, I look at that and, you know, obviously, you know, you don't enjoy seeing somebody that, you know, you see, you know, that you respect as an actor comparing you to Nazis and Confederates. Uh, but do I want him fired for his job, from his job? No. And that's why I don't want... Uh, oh, was am very much again. Obviously, I'm supportive of Gina because I'm also Republican. Um, and uh, you know, again, do I think there could have been a more nuanced way that she could have put it? I think so. I think you know because there were more than just Jewish people that died in the Holocaust, and I think you could have done something different than you know than that to get the point across. So I think what with what she was getting at was more of just, you know, when that stuff was going down and people were getting rounded up, I think, you know, you don't see that happening and necessarily expect that, you know, a Holocaust is going to happen. And again, too, like with Disney, like they just did a, you know, Mulan in, in China. They filmed there in China in the Providence where they have their own re-education concentration camps for uh, the weaker Muslim people and keep them trapped there and uh, which is a big human rights violation and even thanked the 
Providence for doing that, uh, for having them, you know, and allowing them to film there for Mulan. And so for me, it, it's just one of those things of, okay, you're going to get rid of her for saying that, but you gave China money and, and you know, work together with them when they have a uh, their own, you know, catastrophic human rights violation, like right in your providence. And uh, to me, it's just, you know, a sad, unfortunate thing. And, you know, it's not the thing that I want to be talking about for a science fiction show that, you know, we... You know that is generally a good one and that we you know both enjoy and uh you know that's the the, the sad thing about this world unfortunately yeah and which is why i don't really give a crap about who gets fired over what the reason does it stink absolutely Am I going to stop watching Mandalorian because Lucasfilm was forced by Disney to fire a popular character? No. No more than I'm going to stop watching The Flash because they canned Ralph Dibney for arguably stuff that was probably about the same level, give or take. I mean, he said... I, I mean... I think he talked about uh, killing people jokingly. Uh, I mean, again, like, I don't think he should, you know, considering the time, like, I think with that one, because there was so, like, if he had said that more, like, while he was the character, I think I would be a bit more, like, kind of understanding, like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, even if it was kind of in a joking matter, like it definitely uncomfortable, but with that, considering how many years had passed since then, you know, with that, I'm much more willing to give someone the benefit of a doubt because we don't know the mental state that Ralph was in, uh, the, the actor was in, you know, when he said that, and, you know, maybe he was, you know, not a good person then went through uh, like a personal growth and uh, changed as a person you know it like not to excuse what he said but you know at the same time we all can be you know can grow as people and you know certainly people that are bad you know can find redemption do something better with their life and uh, you know we see that with i mean that's that's kind of you know one of the those great stories in fiction is watching you know someone that's kind of uh, uh, you know i mean look at scrooge like and you know the christmas carol you know and also all sorts of other type of uh you know redemption stories you know zuko in uh, avatar mm -hmm. you know seeing some you know the bad person you know, finding themselves and, you know, becoming a good person. So I feel like that's a lot of what uh, can be missed with these things sometimes, which is why, you know, I really, you know, push back against cancel culture. Yeah. And I, now, the difference here between the two scenarios we were just just bringing up is like you just said the things that were said um, in reference to the uh, character on the flash were said years before they came up and lost the actor's job this one in, in the case of Gina was recent like they were said during this time frame right so it is different in that regard it's hit like right now like this year I didn't get a chance to actually see what she said because uh, it's been taken down so I haven't been able well, I can to send it to you well, I saw the link that you posted on your Twitter but the, the, well, really, I, well, I, could, I have me, the actual picture of, well, um, yeah of send, it, send that to me after because I just like to see what was actually said because 
it is really hard for me to make a determination with the information that I have available to me, like at this second, because all I can get was it was a, there was some sort of comparison made between being Republican and being a Jew in the Holocaust. That general, it's, that general, I, that just from my perspective, being that general, I can see where people would be upset, but not having the actual tweet I can look at or Instagram post or whatever it was. Maybe my opinion will change. I don't know. Um, it's I, to me, and this is again, I'm coming from my own, you know, biased opinion as a Republican, as someone that's a, a fan of her. But so, you know, I, you know, you can take what I say with a grain of salt, you know, because obviously my perception, you know, colors my view of it. But you know, for one, uh, she does never uses the word Holocaust in it or or dying in the Holocaust. It's more of a a lot of it is just kind of talking about culture today with just um, a lot of the civil unrest and conflict that's going on right now. And uh, that there's just a lot of, uh, ultimately, you know, everything that kind of happened with last year and everything, you know, there's just been and really just uh it's been building up for years honestly of just uh you know concern about uh you know social unrest based on who you are politically and you know the fact that it's more acceptable to be one publicly one political party over the other and her post was essentially you know just talking about you know there is a day you know how did it people you know in germany kind of you know come to you know be fine with people getting rounded up and sent away is uh, allowing the government to cause them to hate each other to the point when people started getting rounded up you know it didn't really you know trigger their uh you know make any cause them to question it or cause any sort of alarm in that sense uh, it's essentially you know that but uh you know a little bit more clear uh, honestly like when i read it it you know it didn't really trigger anything to me but uh you know it may it may be different to you but uh i can uh, send that to you afterwards yeah i'd, I'd just like to see what what was actually the catalyst for all this like like I said, by the time I actually got around to being able to sit down before we got uh, got on air and, and look at it, it's already gone. I mean, right. all, all I can go by are the myriad of news articles that have come out about it, which all say the same thing because they're all based off the same press release. And we all know those press releases are accurate. Right, and that uh, all these journalists don't talk with each other and come up with uh, what, how they're going to approach a story. Yeah, I, I, I've been seeing rumblings uh, up until before this about uh, people within Lucasfilm wanting her gone anyway. Um, I'm sure you can figure out which side of that was the driving force mm -hmm. um, but uh, you give them a straw to break the back and what are you going to do yeah you know certainly she's provocative but uh, how many people in Hollywood are all of them just in their own way it's just one is more uh, except well, one side's more acceptable than the other for the most part, but you know, it's all opinion and how you see it. But, uh, you know, it's these are kind of difficult conversations. I, I think really we haven't had this type of a deep conversation really since the, the Ralph Dibney uh episode, and really, I would say this one's probably even touchier. But, uh, you know, 
Like I, <laughs> I've been arguing with a, a, a friend in quotations of mine uh, on Facebook the past day about it. And, uh, you know, I have to say like, I, you know, even though we may not necessarily see the exact same points, you know, I appreciate your viewpoint and, uh, you know, I am happy that we're able to have a mature kind of conversation about this without resorting to, you know, like name calling or anything. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to, you know, always seek things kind of similarly. We, we do have little differences here and there, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, want to say too, that, uh, uh, I appreciate you and, uh, the, you know, ability to have this type of conversation that, as we've had it. Oh yes, yeah, because we we both know I've fallen in on the wrong side of one of these conversations in other areas, and you know it's one of those things where I don't care what you say. I'm just going to browbeat you with facts until you agree with me. That's never fun, and that's why I want to know what was said because you know I don't know if it'll change my opinion or not. Just I'm curious like i, I want to know what what actually sparked this and i mean i'm it's, surprised it's, I, i'm on one hand i'm kind of surprised that uh, they didn't normally when something like this happens you would expect them to uh post um you'd expect them to to kind of post the actual offending thing but uh you know i uh, uh yeah going back to the ralph the ralph Div, ralph Dib, dibney uh thing from last year or the year before whatever year it was um even after the fact when we found out like it was days a couple days later just like now where uh, we talked about it and I was still able to, f to find with a quick internet search the, uh, the, the the pictures of the tweets and here I can't like it's just proof that, you know, you can't just take what's uh, being said at face value because face value can be changed on the internet because I can't find right. it. You have a copy of it, so I will see it. But my own my own search, I can't find it. I have to take the word of the, uh, the articles, which I don't really trust, so... Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think that's kind of unethical to to simply say you know say ultimately what your interpretation of what they said, uh, you know, instead of just posting, you know, the screenshot of what you put. I think that's you know, in that case, I think you're purposely trying to color someone's opinion when it should really just be putting it out there and letting them, you know, sort their opinions, you know, from that. Yeah, I was talking to my wife about it, and she said something very similar along the lines of what you said about uh, what she was trying to say in regards to the point. But all I could find is she must have found it sooner than I did because she went back and tried to find where she saw, like, the, the, the capture of the, of the screenshot or whatever. And she couldn't find that just like a couple hours ago, but she saw it. So I don't know. It's just one of those weird things like, okay, this is such a big freaking deal. Why can't I find this? Right. And my wife who saw it can't find it a couple hours later. Hmm. That's journalism for you today. Some I missed something. Oh, just, uh, oh, yeah. Well, just, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, they won't, you know, that every, it's all been removed. Uh, well, that's, that's censorship on one hand. You know, that's uh, everything with social media. But also the fact that, you know, again, you would think that uh, since it's the news that they would, uh, and since it was out there, and I'm sure that these people have what she put, I, I do. Um, if I do, they certainly do. Oh, for sure. Um, 
but uh, you would imagine that they would uh, put it out there. But, uh, you know, the fact that they don't, I don't know, like, to me, that's very uh, suspect. But hey, you know, if, you know, you check it out and, you know, you still think that it was well-deserved, you know, so be it. You know, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't change anything really, like, in terms of just, uh, you know, it's just how we see things sometimes. And that's fine. You know, we're not always going to agree. And, you know, the world would be a much more boring place uh, if we always agreed on everything. Oh, oh, for sure. I mean, it's going to be a much more boring place once history is erased. Yes. I mean, I realize history is usually written by the victors, but I mean, come on. You, you know what I'm referring to. Statues of things being torn down for no good reason. Mm -hmm. History happened. And... Pretending that it didn't, that's just stupid. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, has some history been erased, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, watching it happen in front of you and, you know, having the people tell you that you have to change to the way that they think, that uh, I don't like that. And uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna push on me like that, I'm gonna push back. Well, on that note, this has been a really interesting episode. <laughs> we didn't really we talk about, about. We spent just we as, to... just as much time on this on on the on the on the one thing we thought we weren't gonna talk about as we did on the actual topic for the episode. But hey, you know, you get your uh, your pipe content and you get your uh, yeah, you got politics content. all at the same time. Yes. Uh, and this is why we leave politics out of it mostly. Yeah, you know, like it's just I, w I would much rather I mean, I've become much more political over the last couple of years, but, you know, I'd much rather talk about fun things in politics. Well, it's because in in most cases you can't have a fun conversation about politics because someone's going to be wrong and mad, typically. Right, and and it's also to the point now where you can't talk about anything without politics being put into it. Yes, I can't talk about my breakfast choice sometimes without uh, somebody going, "Well, you know, you should have done this because." You know, Trudeau. I don't give a crap about what Trudeau eats for breakfast. Or I guess in your case, the equivalent would be Biden, actually. Which is weird. Yes, it is. Uh, our world today. Oh. Uh. But anyway, but, uh, on that note, again, <laughs> we're going to call it a night and uh, get away from politics and come back with something next week. Don't know what yet. Yeah, we'll figure that out. But anyway, if you're looking to follow us throughout the week, you cannot find me on Instagram anymore. I've deleted that. The show one, anyway, where I've been posting my content creation because they keep not liking my scheduler so what's the point I run out of passwords so there it went but you can always find me on twitter at dr allen 2 dr not dr allen dr a l i e n dr alien 201 greg you still the badger piper over on twitter uh the underscore badger piper uh for, for now <laughs> eventually i'm sure it'll be gone but uh you know it's it's still there i also have a wordpress a wordpress blog uh the badger piper uh dot wordpress dot com where you can uh read about my uh pipe exploits and you can always email us at our always recycled email um 
reverseflashtime at gmail.com, which nobody has ever seen fit to actually use. But that's okay. It's there in case someone decides to. Or you can also tweet at us um, or uh, comment on our uh, YouTube page. Uh, also, didn't we have some recent subscribers to the YouTube page? We did, but I can't find it. YouTube changed the freaking stuff, and now I got I can't find it anymore. YouTube. Yeah. just hate it when the update takes me forever to get used to the updates, and then sometimes you just can't find it. So whoever you are that subscribed a few weeks ago that I promised to, sh to shout you out, I'd love to. I just can't find you. Comment on a video. Let me know who you are. Yes. I'll find that. Just comment on the videos, and we will... Uh... We promise we'll get to it. And with that, thanks for watching and listening, everybody. Have a good weekend. When your weekend that is, you know, whenever you're listening to this happens. You know the one that you're having right now, like the weekend we're recording this. Have a good one. And the next yes, one. Yes, chat with you later. Whatever.